Maccabeem, Shalashi, three Maccabees, six. And Eleazar, an illustrious priest of the country, who had attained to length of day, and whose life had been adorned with virtue, caused the presbyters who were about him to cease to cry out to the holy Elohim, and prayed thus, O King, mighty in power, El Elian, El Shaddai, who regulates the whole creation with your tender mercy. Look upon the seed of Avraham, upon the children of the sanctified Yaakov, your sanctified inheritance, O Father, now being wrongfully destroyed as strangers in a strange land. You destroyed Parol with his host of chariots, when that lord of this same Mitzrayim was uplifted with toilless hardihood and loud-sounding tongue, shedding the beams of your mercy upon the race of Yah You did overwhelm him with his proud army. When Ken Kheriv, the grievous king of Ashur, glorying in his countless hosts, rather countless hosts, had subdued the whole land with his spear and was lifting himself against your holy city with boastings grievous to be endured. You, O Yahweh, did demolish him and did show forth your might to many nations. When the three friends in the land of Babel of their own will expressed their lives to the fire, rather exposed their lives to the fire, rather than serve vain things, you did send a dewy coolness through the fiery furnace and bring the fire upon all their adversaries. It was you who, when Daniel was hurled through slander and envy as a prey to lions down below, did bring him back against unhurt to light. When Yana, rather, when Yona was pining away in the belly of the sea-bred monster. You did look upon him, O Father, and recover him to the sight of his own. And now, you who hate insolence, you who do abound in mercy, you who are the protector of all things, appear quickly to those of the race of Yashara'el, who are insulted by the abhorred and toreless other people. If our life has during our exile been stained with iniquity, deliver us from the hand of the enemy and destroy us, O Yahweh, by the death which you prefer. Let not the vain-minded congratulate vain idols at the destruction of your beloved, saying, Neither did their Elohim deliver them. You who are omnipotent and El Shaddai, O Eternal One, behold, have mercy upon us who are, big, who are being withdrawn from life like traitors by the unreasoning insolence of Torahless men. Let the heathen cower before your invincible might today. O glorious one, who have all power to save the race of Yaakov, the whole band of infants and their parents, with tears beseech you. Let it be shown to all the nations that you are with us, O Yahweh, and have not 
turned your face away from us, but, as you said, that you would not forget them. Even in the land of their enemies, so do you fulfill this, saying, O Yahweh. Now, at the time that Eleazar had ended his prayer, the king came along to the Hippodrome with the wild beasts and with his tumultuous power. When the Yahudim saw this, they uttered a loud cry to heaven, so that the adjacent valleys resounded and caused an irrepressible lamentation throughout the army. Then the all-glorious, omnipotent, and true Elohim displayed his holy countenance and opened the gates of heaven from which two angels, dreadful of form, came down and were visible to all but the Yahudim. And they stood opposite and filled the enemy's hosts, rather host with confusion and cowardice, and bound them with immovable fetters. And a cold shudder came over the person of the king, and oblivion paralyzed the vehemence of his ruach. They turned back the animals upon the armed forces which followed them, and the animals trod them down and destroyed them. The king's wrath was converted into compassion, and he wept at his own machinations. For when he heard the cry and saw them all on the verge of destruction, with tears he angrily threatened his friends, saying, You have governed badly, and have exceeded tyrants in cruelty, and me, your benefactor, ye have labored to deprive at once of my dominion and my life by secretly devising measures injurious to the kingdom." who has gathered here, unreasonably removing each from his home, those who, in fidelity to us, had held the fortress of the country. Who has thus consigned to unmerited punishments those who, in good will toward us, rather towards us from the beginning, have in all things surpassed all nations, and who often have engaged in the most dangerous undertakings. Loose, loose the unjust bonds, and send them to their homes in peace, and deprecate what has been done. Release the sons of El Shaddai, living Elohim of heaven, who from our ancestors' times until now has granted a glorious and uninterrupted prosperity to our affairs. These things he said, and they, released the same moment, having now escaped death, praised Elohim, their holy Savior. The king then departed to the city and called his financier to him and bade him provide a seven days quantity of wine and other materials for feasting for the Yahudim. He decided that they should keep a gladsome feast of deliverance in the very place in which they expected to meet with their destruction. Then they who were before despised and nigh unto Sheol, yea, rather advanced into it, partook of the cup of Yahshua, instead of a grievous and lamentable death. Full of exultation, they parted out the place intended for their fall and burial into banqueting booths. Ceasing their miserable strain of woe, they took up the subject of their fatherland, hymning in praise Elohim, their wonder-working Savior, all groans, all wailing were laid aside, 
They formed dances in token of serene joy. So, also, the king collected a number of guests for the occasion and returned unceasing thanks with much magnificence for the unexpected deliverance afforded him. Those who had marked them out as for death and for carrion and had registered them with joy, howled aloud, and were clothed with shame, and had the fire of their rage ingloriously put out. But the Yahudim, as we just said, instituted a dance, and then gave themselves up to feasting, glad thanksgivings and psalms. They made a public ordinance to commemorate these things for generations to come as long as they should be sojourners. They thus established these days as days of mirth, not for the purpose of drinking or luxury, but because Elohim had saved them. They requested the king to send them back to their homes. They were being enrolled from the 25th of Pachan to the 4th of Ephaphi a period of 40 days. The measures taken for the destruction lasted from the 5th of Epaphi till the 7th, that is, three days. The ruler, overall, did during this time manifest forth his mercy gloriously and did deliver them altogether unharmed. They feasted upon the king's provision up to the fourteenth day, and then asked to be sent away. The king commended them and wrote the sub subjoined sefer of magnanimous import for them to the commanders of every city. <laughs>